Hey guys, today we are taking a look at a couple different types of watercolor. Here we have Marie's Western style watercolor and here we have Marie's Chinese style watercolor. After doing a lot of reading, a lot of digging, I have found out that the Chinese style watercolor is fantastic and their Western style watercolor is definitely a miss. So I thought for today it would be cool to unbox, take a look at the Chinese style watercolor and compare it to their Western style watercolor. So if that sounds intriguing to you, keep watching. there are several types of traditional Chinese watercolors available in China, there aren't too many available here in the U.S. But supposedly Marie's, the company that makes the watercolors we, uh, we all have experience with, apparently makes some very excellent Chinese watercolors. This is their real strong suit. Now I ordered these off of Amazon, but you could also get the Yasutomo ones. Those are also very much recommended. Um, and uh, I guess it's just this, Marie's and Yasutomo are the two I'm really seeing. But uh, traditionally Chinese watercolor are mineral pigments suspended in light at a binder that's very similar to animal glue. So they behave quite a bit differently than Western watercolors and we shouldn't uh, expect them to behave like Western watercolors because they're not. So I am going to get this package open and I'm gonna need a knife to do so. And I kind of, I kind of decided to start exploring this because I'm actually doing a deep dive blog post on um, Asian styles of watercolor, trying to find new inspiration and new sources of information. And uh, it's still ongoing because there's just so much information, so much beautiful, beautiful art, such a rich, rich, long history, far longer than Western watercolor. There's just so much there to enjoy. So I hope if you guys have any interest in kind of just learning the basics of several types of watercolor that you might not know anything about, I hope you guys will join me over at natosoup.blogspot.com for that. It's taking me a while to get it all written, but um, I think it will be well worth the wait. And this was packaged, actually it's packaged quite beautifully. Um, but it was packaged quite securely and it comes in a very nice cardboard box. These are the Marie's high grade Chinese painting color tubes, high grade watercolor set with nine milliliter tubes and 12 colors. I paid $21.99 for this set on Amazon. They have some other sets as well. And I couldn't really find the difference between the uh, Marie's Chinese Painting Color Tubes big size watercolor set, which has 12 milliliter tubes, and this set here other than really the size and some of the color options available. Now, this is available in an 18 color set for $28.99 or the 12 color set for $21.99, I'm sorry. The box seems to have a magnetic closure, which is really nice. And inside are our tubes and they have been labeled. We have titanium white, gamboge, cinnabar, vermilion, pony, peony red, rouge, green label, oh wait, let me see now. Green label three, green label one, green label one, wait, what? Oh, that's a shame you sent me two of the green, two of the same color. Um, blue label three, blue label one, and indigo. And something very interesting is that Chinese watercolors and some Japanese watercolors, the way the colors, the lighter colors are made are through subsequent washing of the pigment and what sediment is left is the size of the particle. So color varies with the size of the particle rather than with adding white, although you certainly could add white. So that is the Marie's professional watercolors. And the picture on Amazon has titanium white, gamboge vermilion, peony red, burnt sienna, which I didn't get, cinnabar rouge, 
label three, green label one, green label two, blue label one and indigo. So I am missing burnt sienna. You can order individual tubes, it seems like, um, which is what I might have to do since I got a duplicate. So it looks like I can, if I want to, buy sets of five or yeah, just sets of five of the really big ones, the 12 millimeter ones, or sets of 10 of the 12 millimeter ones for burnt sienna. Rather than then, then do that though, I am going to buy the Chinese watercolors that are one step below this in terms of quality. And that way we'll get a chance to compare those as well. And it's just kind of a shame. <laughs> I got two green label ones and no burnt siennas, especially since I, I do paint people pretty frequently and that is a color that's very helpful. So this is a very old set of Marie's watercolor and these are their Western style watercolors. Some people like them all right. Um, some people say they work pretty well. I opened these up years ago, as you can see from the paint on the tubes, although they still feel soft. So what we're going to do today is we are going to swatch both types of watercolor on two types of paper. We're going to swatch it on Western um, cotton rag watercolor paper. And we're also going to swatch it on Chinese Shawn, X-A-U-N watercolor paper. And on Amazon, of course, I could not find anything about the sizing, but it comes in two main types, sized and unsized. And I was looking for the size because I'm very interested in learning how to do Gong B watercolor, which is um, beautiful, very colorful watercolor with very intricate, beautiful line work. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any information on Amazon regarding whether or not it is sized or unsized. I did, however, find information about ripe paper. So this is half ripe uh, Sean paper. And for me, this is just sort of an experimentation with these materials try and find something that kind of works for me so that I can further explore them. There are loads of books and um, tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. So I will probably be working along with those for the most part. So this isn't a tutorial, rather it's just sort of a demonstration of some of the materials and a visual comparison of the two sets. Chinese watercolor is interesting in that it is designed to complement and work well with black sumi ink. It's designed not to become muddy and it is not to de designed to be as heavily worked as Western watercolors. So um, mm, a little more gestural, a little more delicate and uh, much more rigid in terms of like shape forms are pretty consistently performed. So I'm not going to be just demonstrating any of that because I have yet to learn any, although I hope to in the near future. Like I said, though, we are just going to be swatching the two sets for today so that I have something to write about regarding actually handling the materials in the post that I've been working on. So one of the first things I do want to do is I do want to compare the tubes. And honestly, their Chinese style watercolor looks a lot more like the Western tubes that I'm familiar with. Whereas their Western style watercolor looks a lot like some of the Asian brands of watercolor I'm familiar with, like um, Shinhan, Yasutomo. And I do have a Yasutomo set, so I will be swatching those in the near future as well. So we're going to begin with the Western style testing on the Blick cotton rag watercolor paper. We are going to do a mass tone swatch and a gradiated wash. So I am using a pigment based brush pen. And I'm going to lay down several lines across the paper. And I'm going to give that a chance to cure so that it doesn't reactivate as I add the watercolor on top of it. All 
right, so I'm going to do my swatching with a Chinese style or a sumi brush. And we have 18 colors to swatch. So we'll go ahead and get started. guys so I have swatched all of the Marie's Western watercolors on this cotton rag paper they actually swatch quite nice fairly similarly to the um, Shin Han professional watercolors or the Turner watercolors so I know they've got kind of a bad rap at this point in time I can't really see why next I am going to swatch them on the Sean paper This isn't a video about Sean watercolor paper. I do want to make a couple comments. It feels very responsive and very fun. And it kind of reminds me of what I've experienced painting with washi paper when doing edigami postcards. So it would be really, I think I will have a lot of fun playing around with this paper. This is also practice style paper. So there are different grades and this kind of paper is actually designed to be painted on from both sides. For a more pastel effect, you paint on the other side. So after this is dried, I'm gonna flip it over we're gonna paint on the other side and then compare the two sides or the two halves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw a line down the middle so we can compare. This is still very damp, but as you guys can see, I have, and I probably wet this too much, so it'll be interesting to see as it dries if the opposite side, the stuff that was, um, the paint that was applied to the back of the page lightens up any. It's supposed to be used when you want kind of a pastel or a faded effect. And these are our initial swatches on the Sean paper. So next, we're going to go ahead and swatch the Chinese watercolors. So I'm gonna get this mess cleaned up. I'll check in with you guys in a sec. Here is the Chinese watercolor set. There's actually a pretty significant price difference between the Western style set and the Chinese set. And this is the set still minus the burnt sienna. So I'm pretty much going to do the same two swatch tests that I did with the Western style watercolors.
right, so just finished watching the Chinese watercolors on Western style watercolor paper. Already I can see they're quite a bit more opaque than the um, Western style Marie's watercolors. Now that is normal for Chinese watercolors. They are more opaque in general. Next, I'm going to test them on the Sean paper and then we're going to compare everything side by side. So I think the Chinese watercolors demonstrate what I was talking about, about painting on the back of Chinese watercolor papers and then utilizing that as your pastel or your softer tone. A little bit better than the Western watercolors, which seemed to just almost bleed all the way through. So the color is almost in as intense, regardless of, you know, whether you're looking at the front of it or the back. There's a few exceptions with some of the more opaque colors. My Chinese watercolors have had a chance to dry overnight on the Sean paper. You guys can see that they do show through through the back. The paper is actually designed for that. And we have titanium white, gamboge, cinnabar, vermilion, which is very a very orange sort of vermilion, peony red, rouge, green label three, green label one, blue label three, blue label one, and indigo. And I would really love to be able to pick up a wider variety of Chinese watercolors open stock. So perhaps if I ever end up in the San Francisco area again, I'll make it a point to go look for some because there are a few art stores, well, of course there are a few art stores, stores out there. And if you guys have any recommendations where I might be able to pick up Chinese watercolors open stock, please do let me know. I am very interested in it. And here are how they perform on the Western watercolor paper. And I love how these colors look on this paper. It might be that I'm just more familiar with them and I'm not yet adept at handling them on the traditional paper, but I love how the colors look. I love the slight opacity and I think this is going to be really fun for me to play with both. And again, here are the Marie's Western style watercolors. and on the Western paper. And they actually performed better than I remember them performing somewhat similarly to the Shinhan Professional or the Turner watercolors. Definitely better than I remember. So this kind of inspires me to want to go and retest, re-swatch re Reeves watercolors on nicer papers as well, since those are the sort of like little sister brand, I guess, of Windsor and Newton. But this has been a really fun unbox and swatch video. I hope it possibly answered some questions for you guys, maybe turned you on to a new product or made you interested in trying out something new. I do hope you'll keep an eye out for the blog post I have coming up covering several different types of Asian watercolor styles and watercolor products. Of course, it is not all inclusive, but I think it might be a good start for those of us whose art educations very much neglected Asian art histories and Asian Asian art, Asian art traditions. And there's a lot of good information out there. Um, just sometimes it needs to be collated a little bit differently. There's some uh, repetition on Wikipedia where several things are given multiple entries, but they actually refer to the same sort of technique and that could have been condensed into one post for disambiguity. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again really soon. I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative. Make sure you check out natosoup.blogspot.com for my watercolor basic series with more watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials, and consider subscribing for more watercolor content like this. Have a great day, guys. Bye.